Is that? <laughs> okay. All right. We we have a, a our next uh, uh, next uh, paper here is still in this idea of uh, thinking of digital transformation, uh, or or as they used to call at the time, uh, IT enabled transformation or strategies for virtualizing an organization. Uh, Again, virtual uh, a virtual organization is pretty much what nowadays we we call that the result of virtual to, of digital transformation, right? And these guys here, I, what I like about their paper, this real strategies for virtual organization. Again, Mr. Venkatraman and Henderson. Today is the Venkatraman and Henderson day. Uh, I'm not sure who who was the the, the 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 faculty in here and who was the students i mean one of them was a phd student and the other was the was their the advisor or something at at some stage then both became of course later both were professors but uh, uh i don't know who who was but i think that there was this relationship but what i like uh, about this paper is again and and by the way, it's something, if you, if you look for the Venkatraman papers, one good thing about this author is that you read their whole paper, and the whole paper is there to explain one picture. All right, so the picture is the summary. Uh, this, this picture here is the summary for, for, this, um, for this paper. Uh, basically, when thinking about ways in which organizations could be virtualized, and I would say it's still a, a, a digital transformation model because if you want to get an organization that works in, in the real world or the traditional world and you want to have it uh, uh, transformed into a digital organization, he claimed that we should develop three, um, what he called here, three vectors. The vectors are the horizontal lines uh, and in each one of these vectors would provide the company with some sort of competitive edge in the market. So, uh, and, and then each one of the, for each one of those vectors, uh, they develop here three stages. So three stages of maturity. Uh, you start from here and then you, you get a little more, um, experience with that and then you get to a second stage and a third stage uh, and um, so the, f the first uh, and, and in fact you will notice uh, maybe when we when, when you all have access to the to the Moodle here I will explain it better how the whole course here this whole, whole uh, course is structured based on these three vectors uh, in fact tomorrow we will start talking about uh, vector one in the morning and vector two in the afternoon and on Friday we will talk a bit about vector three in more detail okay. but you'll see that uh, uh, these are, are things that uh, we, we now see happening in, in many companies but again the digital transformation that some of them had to go through during the pandemic for example when companies said well my customers are at home and I cannot reach them. My, uh, my suppliers uh, cannot be re reached. How, 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 how do we connect and everything? And then some of them had to reach out to the, these models that had already been proposed back there in the, in the 90s, right? So what he says, it's, he says, uh, IT now provides us with the possibility of changing the way we interact with our customers. We change the way we interact. If, if we were to think about again about those models, there we would be talking about uh, uh, which one of the the red or the the green. It depends. Uh, if if you're just looking for efficiency, it is uh, the the red. If if we're looking for effectiveness, do, if if it's the way we'll do things, it's the red technology transformation. If it's uh, what we do, it is competitive potential. Uh, but so, so we, we, may, we, we may want to explore new possibilities of interacting with students, uh, with, uh, sorry, with customers, 
for the two different reasons, right? Uh, and they say here this customer interaction will happen through a, what they call here a virtual encounter. For us today, this is obvious. In fact, you were already born in a connect, uh, absolutely connected uh, world. Um, so some of the things that they, they were proposing here, I, I'd say that most companies already do. For example, stage one was simply, well, provide your customers with a remote experience of products and services, right? So before before they, they, they get the actual thing, let them understand what your, 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 your product uh, is and, and provide them with uh, some form of, of, of acquiring a better sense if they want to buy it or not. Or So how, how do we provide students with a remote experience of products and services? Hmm? It could be, in fact, nowadays we can do that in many different ways. Even, even there, there, there are companies that do it in a very simple way through WhatsApp, yeah. right? But a website uh, sh containing uh, information, a, a blog, uh, whatever. Uh, so th there are many ways in which we can uh, talk to the, to, to the customer and, and provide information about the product before he or she needs to, 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 have a, uh, to decide on buying the, the, the product, for example. Uh, I remember that one of the funny things that happened uh, back in the 90s is that when companies decided, okay, so I'll, I'll, now I'll, I will have, I'll provide my, student, my, my, my customers with this uh, remote experience, I will bring the catalogs of my products online, for example. Well, bringing the catalog online, is it providing uh, some experience? Yes, uh, they, they can check the manuals and try to understand if that's what they need. But the interesting thing is that then in the manuals, pictures were black and white, for example. And then uh, on the web, why would anyone uh, have a black and white picture? I mean, on paper, the reason to for someone to decide on a black white and white picture in general it is because it's more cost effective it costs less you print only once right uh, if you if you have something that is printed in color well nowadays it's even that is different because if you print in color in a in a laser printer it's only one printing right uh, it's all in once but in the past if, if we're thinking about a book for example or or a, a card like that one, it would mean paint, uh, printing twice, printing first in black and then waiting for it to, to dry and then printing it in red on top. Uh, so this was the reason why uh, many times they, they, they had. But anyway, that's uh, just a, a, a stage two is, is, is where things start getting interesting and, and where many companies still today do not get dynamic customization dynamic customization is the possibility of you allowing your customers to be served online and they can themselves decide on the specific uh, details of the product that they are product or service that they're buying they, they will help configure that so that you can uh, uh, support each customer precisely with what that customer needs or wants Right. I'll show you a, a quick example here of customization, one that is has been around since the 90s. Uh, it's Nike.com. Well, I don't know if the, in the French. Uh, now the problem here is that I went, I, I got straight into their French side, and I don't know if here I can. Where? What I want? No, what I want to do? It, no, I don't want to change language. My, my my problem is not language here. My problem is the the, the website that we are. Uh, I want the American one. Yeah, you can just say yeah, X to slash E X to slash E X English. Yeah, 
uh, but I don't. Uh, I went to United States website. So I see it. It's U.S. Maybe. Yeah. You know why I want this? Because I, I don't know if they're the same uh, everywhere, but I want, we can't find the pay. Oh, so we can't so we find. Can click on Diamond Fields down. Where? Down. It's showing United States. Pop up. That pop up. There's a pop up. In the pop up? Yeah. Uh, but what? Down. Down. The, the bottom, bottom right. right. So it seems that there are some people that buy. No, bottom left. Bottom left. Right. Bottom left. left. There's a pop up. There's a pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Yes. Ah. Yeah, maybe here. Yeah. No, no, but English. Okay. Uh, and the reason I, I want this is I just want to see if they still have it very easily here, the, the customization. Shop by classics. If I see that, let's see if we have a customized button here. Can you see any customization there? I mean, maybe I'll just search customize. They have been uh, uh, experimenting with customization since the 90s. Let's see what happens here if I, this, this for example, this one, I, I can customize this one. Uh, hmm? So they have here, uh, well, first select the size. In my case, it would be probably 10.5. Then what? What else can I do here? I can customize. It's been a while since I last uh, explored this, so this is why. I'm, uh, but let's say the leather. Let's say that we want the leather in yellow. Uh, Velvet. Hmm? And then what? What's that? Yellow. Uh, am I doing it only to the right? Do I have to? Do I? Have, oh. Yeah. Do I have to do it to, to the left as well? No. Velvet. No, this is strange. <laughs> why, why, why is it different? Yeah, I think some people like that. They come to different Really? Yeah, I've seen people wearing leather. I think it's So I have to leather. put here and. <laughs> and leather. Yeah, leather again. Yeah. Ooh. But see, see the level of, uh, I'll not be playing with this uh, now, but see, I, I can uh, change. Uh, so there is, there is 19 different uh, items here that I can change. And this is the right shoe. Yeah, okay, so I'll have to go to the next to see the left shoe, yeah. yeah you'll have to pay attention because, yeah, but yeah, I understand that there are people that, they, they really, they, at, at first you couldn't make it different one, and the other, and then probably the, the customers were already saying, "Look, I want to." Uh, there is 19 items here that we can uh, change, and and uh, maybe this is just yeah. Uh, let's see. Forget, forget. Okay. See, I can do all of that, and uh, and, and while I'm playing with this, uh, probably Nike is not not carrying it. I don't think that they are following. Let's see what these guys are doing there in France. They, uh, but as soon as I put my credit card here and say, I'm paying 160 bucks for this, right? Uh, this means a lot to them. Well, it means that I, I, I spent half an hour here deciding on what, what I wanted. 
and that I gave this for free to them. Right? In, in times of data science, it's great to be able to collect that kind of data from, from, from users. It's different. If you just buy shoes, then they, they know that you liked that one or that you were forced to buy that one because you had no alternative. But if you choose each detail of the shoes you, you're buying, uh, they will be able to know a lot more about your, your interests. And they will know, for example, uh, that um, the, well, they, they're not showing customized, they're not selling customized shoes everywhere in the world, at least in Brazil, we, we didn't have it. Maybe I'll su be surprised. I, I think the last time I played with this was last year when I was here. Right? Uh, but, uh, so maybe they, they, they now do. But they have had this uh, ID, they, they, they used to call it Nike ID, for, I understand, for individual. Uh, and uh, they've had it for quite a while. Uh, and they sell, and the price is $160. It's probably about the same price, maybe a little more than you would pay if you were buying it on a shop, in a shop. Uh, maybe the work that they have to do is a lot more because think of the, this, this is still an industrial line, right? This is produ pr produced in series. So if we start messing up with the, seri the, 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 the production and saying, oh, look, now, now it's the, tennis, the Alex tennis shoes, so we have to check he wants the front in blue. And it's no problem. Uh, uh, what, what I mean here is this has to be, the engineer has to have thought of that. It's not just giving people ch the chance of um, choosing whatever they want and then creating a nightmare in the production line. So, so they have to think of, I, I can assure you that the, 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 even the number of possibilities that they, they're giving you relates to how this is going to be manufactured afterwards. If I were someone in the production line here, they would probably check, well, look, Alex has to, to work really fast because he has to, to manufacture one tennis shoe after the other. His arms are long, but not very long, so he can reach maybe blue leather from here, yellow from here, he, he, if he has to stand and go get, uh, grab something in, uh, somewhere else, it will not work because we want the production line to flow at least almost as fast as it, if it would uh, uh, as it would if all products were exactly the same. Right, so they, they don't want the, 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 the line to become much more complex, but it already does, right? Because of course, if first they, they would just have to have a bucket of uh, white uh, Front here now I have to, to have the white, the blue, the, the uh, and f for my position in the production line. Of course, I am the, the let, let's suppose that I'm the guy who's just putting this part of the the, the the tennis shoes here, and then I pass to someone else who will do the next detail and and so on. But the thing is now uh, these guys thought when we do dynamic customization, we not only provide a product that is more valuable to the customer because the customer is getting exactly what the customer wished. But at the same time, we are understanding better that specific customer and who else? Everyone who's like him or her. Right? So we, we, we can start uh, understanding, for example, that in India, the patterns of colors that people select one together with the other are different to the patterns that uh, a Brazilian would choose or that they would choose in Nigeria, for example. And then we start, we start getting information that will help us even be more, let's say, precise in the production line when it's producing the mass uh, products for consumption because we are going to send to India tennis shoes that are more similar to you know, to, to those that had been requested uh, through customization. So notice that customization is not, I want to provide better value for that individual um, cell, uh, but I also want to get information to improve the quality of my, my decisions about the production itself. Uh, and this was something, so this was something that was not possible before IT started playing a role in the production scheme.
let's let's think again about that model there i i have technology that allows me to change my product now i'm not a producer simply of tennis shoes all all the same now i produce customized shoes that is uh, customization and personalization end up providing almost the same result right uh, the customer cus customization is one way of getting personalized products in a way that we do not lose the efficiency that the engineer wants right so the basically dif the basically the difference between customization and per personalization is that personalization is what uh, the art craftsman used to do to please the king he would go there and ask, "What your what 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 is your exactly what we were doing here with uh, in Nike uh, Nike's website?" He would check with the king. Do you, how would you like to have the front part of your tennis shoes, and the the back and this and that, right? But personalization doesn't provide us with the benefit of um, efficient production. Uh, it, it is effective because it allows for. Uh, the production of a product that is exactly what the customer wishes, but it is not efficient. We want to be efficient and effective. So when, uh, when uh, the CIO of, 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 of uh, Nike perceives that digital uh, dynamic customization is possible and he goes there and talks to the CEO, the president of the company and says, let's, let's do this. Uh, the, C the CEO, as a as as a business visionary, notice. Yeah, this is. I think people will enjoy that. So it's worth for us to spend money, and, and to improve this, uh, to, to 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 change our methods. Uh, or, also as a visionary, the the CEO may say, "Wow, this may even be an expensive way of pr producing. Maybe." The tennis shoes that we produce using this uh, <coughs> this uh, technology, uh, we will have to sell it at a price that is lower than the cost. Would that make sense? We'll have to sell for one hundred and sixty dollars, but it will cost us two hundred dollars. Does that make sense? And then he may say yes, because I sell to some people customized shoes and I learn a lot about this, the, the people that go to, to the same school they go the people that live in the same city they do the people that uh, support the, in the same soccer team they do or whatever understand it so it may even be customization may even be done uh, with that in so one of those pers which one of those perspectives uh, is uh, is being enforced when we think of uh, dynamic customization what are we changing are we doing something uh, else that technology now allows or, or we are just doing the same in a different way we are here right so it's it's this guy this the, the green one the green perspective and it's different to what people in the in the 80s and 90s was used to do that was simply um, uh, strategy uh, strategy execution <coughs> before we get to to the, the third stage here of uh, of the uh, customer interaction let's have a look at the f the, the second the, the, the second um, vector here second vector is asset configuration so first vector we were concerned with the customers trying to understand and connect better connect to the customers now we are looking in the other direction, trying to understand and connect to our suppliers. So one thing that companies can do using IT is, or one thing that they should do, it's not they, they don't even need uh, IT for that, but one thing that they should do is to start, uh, to, to definitely modularize their products. Rethink, re maybe redesign their process so that the product uh, is comprised of modules instead of being one only integral thing. 
what is the, the advantage of having a modular product? Advantage of? A modular product. I didn't. I didn't. I mean the question. Advantage of a modular product. Yeah. W w what is the advantage of having a modular product instead of having a an integral product that is a product that is only one part? This is a modular product. Each part of it is a different module. Yeah. And being modular, I can assemble it in different ways. Yeah, uh, I can plug, uh, think of a, uh, do you know Lego? That uh, Lego, the, the toy? Do, do you all know what Lego is? Lego. L-E. -E. Yeah. This company here. Lego. Yeah. Lego. This, this one here. Oh. Uh, Lego, okay. Le uh, yeah, Le Lego, Lego, you call? Lego bricks. Yeah, Lego bricks. Uh, that, that's that's a modular thing, and being modular, it allows you to build different things. Uh, in our case, uh, having uh, modular products allows us to go back to the first vector and produce the dynamic customization. Dynamic customization depends on modular sourcing right or, or at least on a modular product uh, when, when they, they say sourcing modules it means acknowledging that now that we are connected through technology that that our ICT information communication technologies make it easier for us to relate to outsourced or to, to other parties uh, let's source some modules to them we don't have to do everything in, in, in our company we do the things that we are good at, but but other parts of the product we 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 outsource to someone who, who is more competent than us. So sourcing modules here is acknowledging that others do better than than you some parts, or better or cheaper or whatever, uh, and therefore you should focus on what you're better at. But then you source your modules, and and a second stage would would be. We source, but we still want our process to flow smoothly. So uh, we have to work on the interdependence, uh, the process interdependence between what we do inside and what our partners do, so that uh, at the end of the day, the, the product happens without any disturbance in the process. Uh, we, we even have a case in which, for example, different companies are producing a product together and you don't even know which part of the product was produced by by each one of them because the process is really smooth in fact when it gets absolutely smooth and is it is when you get to what the authors here call a resource collision when you have this the, the term that they use here resource collision is for uh, an in, uh, a process that um, that is absolutely interdependent but that happens completely smoothly without you noticing any flaws in the process. So we, we first we, 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 we work with modules so that we can each different companies do parts of the products. Then we coordinate this uh, production in a way that uh, items are produced in, in number and in, or in quantities and, and uh, in shapes and everything that are the ones required. Uh, and if we do that really smoothly, that for example, if an alien came to Earth and looked at that process, uh, it would not be able to identify who's doing what because it's so smooth, then we have the, the, the resource coalition. Right? Uh, tomorrow, so as I said, tomorrow morning we will be discussing uh, customer interaction. I have if you have the possibility of, uh, of browsing at least these two papers, Real-Time Marketing and uh, Nambisan and Nambisan Virtual Customer Environments, uh, we'll be discussing them in the morning. It's, it's, I, I included them in that zip file 
but you can uh, and and I and, and don't worry I I, I may even, at, at least I'll, I'll send you in WhatsApp I'll, I'll tell you in the, the morning it's going to be Makena and Nambisa uh, so these two papers here they deal with uh, vector one building this uh, intimacy with uh, with customers using technology right um, by the way I didn't uh, mention uh, customer communities uh, much here uh, because this is something that I don't think that makes much sense these days I we, we definitely still should struggle to get a digital uh, customization uh, customer communities um, well, uh, you, the, the argument of the authors here was that uh, if you start talking to your own customers and asking them what they they want from you, they will react. They will respond to you, but they will respond to you in a way that you never know if they're talking the truth of, or if they're talking what they expect you to to what they think that you would like to hear. Right. So there is there is a bias. In fact, this is a bias that we have in any interview. Uh, People, people are trying to say something that is different to what you try to get from them. Um, and then uh, 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 in the 90s, they thought th uh, we were starting to have some, some social networking very, very in a very primitive level. Um, but people uh, thought, yeah, you know, and, and it, it was mainly um, groups in which people discussed... Uh, discussed ideas about products and uh, they, they give here, here an example of um, Harley Davidson for example the motorbikes uh, and uh, how engineers outside Harley Davidson were always giving other other engineers who also had Harley Davidson tips on how to improve their bikes and they and, and then Harley thought well I will pretend I am a customer I'll be there in the middle of them just paying attention to what they're saying right and I will get knowledge out of that uh, you guys from uh, from India uh, you may not remember Orkut do you you do I think you're older than than I thought you were then <laughs> Orkut yeah no th this is something that Brazilians and, and Indians have in common we were the only ones to, to really uh, Use Orkut. Or Orkut was the first uh, one of the first uh, social networks. It was developed by Google, but nobody in the states used. For example, it was India and Brazil. We were the the users of, of Orkut. Huh? Uh, I remember I had uh, so there in the early. It doesn't exist any longer. So. Orkut doesn't exist, uh, I mean, it hasn't been around for at least 10 years. But anyway, I remember that I had a, a boss at the, at the, at the, school of, uh, the school of business that every time I got to his office, he was on or Orkut. And I kept telling him, don't you work? Do you only, uh, you only do your social networks? Come on, someone has to work here. And he said, I am working. And I said, how come? And said, you know, when I go to the class and ask the students, is everything all right? Uh, is there anything that you need? Or what are the problems that you have with the, the school and everything? They don't tell me. Or they to only tell me partially. When I go to their own groups and pretend that I'm a student also, I get a lot of good information. So he spent all his time in students' groups uh, to gather information that was important for him to take uh, decisions. Uh, so and this is was actually what um, Hardy Davidson was doing here with uh, this customer communities. It was paying attention to places where people were discussing uh, what they were doing and getting information from them from 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 there that could improve whatever they were doing themselves. So again, tomorrow morning we'll do customer interaction. Tomorrow afternoon we'll do. Tomorrow afternoon we'll do. Uh, you, you don't have anything to read for tomorrow afternoon, because tomorrow afternoon uh, we're 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 going to do uh, a simulation. But it's going to be an, a simulation about 
uh, the configuration of a, a supply chain or sorry, about the configuration of production right uh, and, uh, and 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 we'll see some some issues here related to you know to difficulties in having a resource coalition that is several entities uh, that work together but work together in a perfect way and then well and, and then there is a third vector for them the th third vector of virtualization of the organization that is the knowledge leverage or the virtual expertise uh, this uh, last um, vector here well basically what what they say is that you could acquire uh, Expertise that comes directly from the work unit, what the ants are doing, you know, little the little ants they're working, and you you get expertise, you get information from there. Then uh, you you can try and get uh, information at the corporate level, uh, and then a third level would be connecting with uh, other professional communities' uh, expertise. When these guys wrote this uh, uh, third vector here, we were still maybe pretty much at the beginning of our communications technologies, the way we use uh, today. So I, I, I really enjoy the fact that they thought that we should have a vector concerned with, the not, with knowledge building. I understand that most of this knowledge building the, that, that, that they were trying to propose here, technology can help us build knowledge, already comes for example, from digital customization and, and module, uh, modeling and everything, because this allows us to collect information from customers, and this also allows us to collect information from suppliers. But I, I find that uh, the way that they propose this, this uh, third, third vector here is a little, I, I think nowadays we would probably do it differently. So I will not sp uh, spend too much time uh, on it, except to, to say that uh, that we maybe one of the most in, uh, enriching uh, things that a that, that a company can do with it in its information systems today is making sure it collects, analyzes, and decides based on data, which was something that was not possible in the past. Right? To give you again a, an example of that, for example, if you go to San Sever uh, shopping center, and you go to a shopping uh, store there, as uh, to a shoe, shoe shoe shop there, and you you want to buy some shoes. You try the first pair, and it's uh, too small. You try the second one, it's too big. You try you try a third one, it's your perfect size, but you don't like the color. You get out of the shop. What information have you left behind? What information can they use to improve uh, the way they support your needs as a customer? No information, right? I mean, you could say, well, the vendor, the, 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 the seller knows that I tried one and it was too big, the, the other one was too small. So maybe he can, at the end of the day, write a, a report and tell his boss, I need the number in the middle. and does that happen? Well, no, a lot of information is lost, right? And uh, with information uh, technology, we can make sure that um, all this information is retained and is used in the future to improve even further our interaction with that customer. Uh, we even have the possibility of, of getting to a situation in which we build what some of our authors here claim to be uh, some virtual intimacy with the customers. Virtual intimacy would be the company knowing its customers so well or even better than they know themselves. It's a little scary, but it already happens, right? Sometimes it already happens. I remember I, uh, I, I brew beer as, uh, at home, right? And uh, so... I mean, I have some pans to brew beer. I have, I have uh, some fancy equipment to, to brew beer. And one day, a few years ago, I woke up in the morning because I had to read a, a, a doctoral thesis. But before I started, I just turned on my computer and blink, 
I had this image of this beautiful pan to brew beer. It was a 200 liter pan, so sort of this, the, cir the circumference was this big, right? And this tall, uh, all made in, in, in stainless steel. My dream of a, a, a pan to brew beer the way I, I wished. How did they know that I, I, that I was a brewer, that I like to brew? And how did they know that the best time to sell me a stupid, uh, to, 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 to get me into that, uh, that stupid purchase was at 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, I don't know, but at that time I wasn't thinking because I bought it. Uh, and I asked it, the, the, it the, this, this pen was made in Italy. And I asked it to be delivered to my brother's home in Spain because I was going to teach a course in Spain a week from uh, a month from then. And then I thought, well, I'll take it home. But guys, this big the thing and, and, and this height, uh, uh, they knew they knew that I, that I would buy. I should have not bought it. So this is the dangerous thing about. Uh, uh, knowing us better than we, we, we do, is that uh, we become more consumerist than we should. It was a nightmare to take that pen to Brazil. It turned out that uh, I used it as my luggage. And at that time, and, and I put all my clothes in there and, I, and then taped it uh, and wished that it would not get damaged while pushed from one side to the other. And they managed to take it to, to, to Brazil. I, I had to pay 100 euros uh, not fine but uh, extra and it was not extra weight because it was an empty uh, but it was extra size but now I'm happy that I have my big pen uh, what I wanted to say here is uh, uh, we, we have I think we have to be concerned with the fact that the more sellers know about us the better they will make uh, uh, their business, not necessarily our business, right? Even if if we liked uh, something, and I'm not complaining about my, my pen, but I'm saying uh, uh, we may become more consumerist than, than we should. We may uh, not have, not reflect as much. We may simply not give ourselves the opportunity to think about different uh, options simply because it's going to be so convenient when someone that knows us as well as, we, as ourselves or, or even better starts pushing things uh, to us. And this all have, has to do with, at least uh, to some extent, with this model here. So I want you to think of this as model as uh, a model that, that structures the course that you're taking with me. Because tomorrow morning we'll be talking about the first vector. Tomorrow afternoon and uh, Friday morning we'll be talking about the second vector. And Friday afternoon we may still uh, deal with, uh, although this is not very clear the way that they did here, we'll, we may still discuss uh, the ways in, in which uh, our information and communication technologies help us uh, improve our knowledge about the world and the decision making because uh, that is what everyone is trying to do now. Right? Uh, data science, for example, is a science that only it, it, it's it's another buzzword, right? Data science is something that 20 years ago we would say, what is that? Uh, business business analysis, or or uh, are we talking about a? But no, no. Data science now means that we we are collecting much more information from our customers, from our suppliers, from from the whole world than than we can handle, and now we are putting our computers to help us make sense of that data. Uh, so that we can use and, and, and take better decisions. Right? Um, so the, the, this third vector is, is an important one, and hopefully we'll be able to deal with it on, on Friday afternoon also. What I will do uh, uh, tonight, well, as soon as I get to, to, to the hotel, I will just brief you on, 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 on the papers. But basically the papers for, for, for tomorrow morning are Makena, and Nambisa, if you have some time and some energy tonight, just have a look at it. Uh, it, it will make uh, possibly our understanding easier. But for tomorrow, first vector in the morning, okay? And afternoon, uh, then a second vector. Uh, any questions? A everyone is in our WhatsApp group, right? So if I send something there, 
considering that we don't have our Moodle yet. Hopefully tomorrow we will. Uh, okay, so I'll, whatever whatever I need, it's, it's through there. But you have these two papers here. They're both in that zip file that I already WhatsApped you a little earlier. Any questions, guys? Any ideas? I, I don't know. You're, you're too quiet. Or maybe I don't give you an opportunity to. <laughs> is this making any sense to you? I, I know that this course is a little different to what you're used to. And I, in fact, I'm glad it is. Uh, again, my, my saying as an engineer, uh, it was some classes like this that changed my perspective about how valuable I would be as an engineer, and uh, and, and, and then allowed me to be. Uh, I, I I had a, a startup for a few years, uh, and then it also helped me value that startup and sell it at some stage, and say now I want to be just in academia because that's what I really loved to do. But it, it was very important for me, w uh, mainly when I was in in Bunze at the side at the business side of the the, the world and, and, and even when i had to sell my company you know one, one thing that you know how much is the company worth right uh and then the, the way you can value a company is by developing the the view of the ego and by uh making sure that you use the your your vi the vision that you, de you you develop by having the view of the ego to also tell others that the ones that are uh, that want to buy your business, for example, uh, why that is uh, promising and wh why they, 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 they should uh, um, keep on, uh, well, pursue with a purchase, for example. So for me, it made a lot of difference and this is why I'm so passionate about it. And of course, <coughs> after I sold my company, this is what I have been researching uh, for the last 20 years or so. So hopefully it, it will touch it, 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 it will, make you think a little, if, if, if I have two or three of you think a little differently than what you thought before with respect to, you know, how we position our engineering in, in a bigger picture, I'll be very happy. Okay. Questions? 